day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Welcome to Bethany this morning for all of you in the sanctuary and those who are um, visiting with us online. We hope that you find this service enlightening and refreshing on this beautiful day. Just a couple of quick announcements. Next Sunday we find um, us coming back to a sense of normalcy for Sunday school. It's rally day. So we invite all kids age three, is it? Three, three to sixth grade um, to join us for um, rally day. It, the, serve, or the Sunday school will be from 8.15 to 9.15. We also invite kids, adults, teachers, anybody who um, carries a backpack um, to and from their in their daily life to bring it to worship next Sunday and we will have a blessing of the backpacks. We ask that you bring the backpack up to the steps um, prior to worship, and we will have you stand where you are during the blessing of the backpack so you can be blessed as well as your backpack, and then you can be on your way. And then following worship next week, we will do an outdoor fellowship time uh, by the hospitality group, so we hope you will all join us for that as we get back to a sense of some normalcy. There is um, a lot of prayer needs that are listed in your bulletin, but I do want to bring to your attention that um, I would like for Bethany to partner with Peace Lutheran in Toma to help with the mission process for our Afghani refugees. Beginning next week, we will have a listing in the bulletin of items that you can bring to donate, along with monetary gifts that you could bring. Um, and Peace Presbyterian, I'm sorry, Peace Lutheran um, will be helping to coordinate some of that. And um, I think it would be a wonderful mission opportunity for us as we welcome these Afghani ref refugees. We also want to um, hold and lift up in our prayers all who are affected by all of the devastation throughout the country, the wildfires, the hurricanes, the floods. Um, I can't even begin to understand what these people are going through. And if we can do our teeny little part by keeping them in prayer, that would be helpful. All of that said, we welcome you to worship and we would like to welcome back this morning, Pastor Mark T Teslick and um, enjoy our worship. Thank you, Pastor Mark, for being here, and Heather for being here with us as well. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sins. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished by Jesus the worker of miracles. There is always more than enough. Through Jesus the bread of life, you were shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We pray, gracious God, throughout the ages you transformed sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen. Amen. First reading from Isaiah chapter 35. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <laughs> Oh. 
second reading is from James chapter 2. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel today from St. Mark, chapter 7. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged Jesus to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre, and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed, and said to him, 
of Ephrathah, that is, be open. And immediately his ears were open, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Heather and I have watched a couple of interesting movies lately. Both were based on true stories. One of the movies was a story of an Irish woman in her 50s who had decided to get the help of a former journalist to look for her son, who was adopted at age four. Philomena Lee was one of many young women who was sent to a local Irish convent to deliver their babies. She was 14 years old when her father sent her to the Irish convent and her baby was born. And she spent the next four years at the convent working in the laundry under an assumed name. The women were only allowed to see their children once a week for an hour. One day, Philomena was by a window looking out to the outside. She saw her child, age four, and she saw a, a woman dressed in very fine clothes and a man getting out of a car and taking her son, putting him in the car and driving off. She began to scream and scream and scream. She was devastated. As I said, she was at that convent for four years and then she left. She married, lived in England, had children, had a job at a hospital as a psychiatric nurse for 30 years and she thought about her son every day, but she never talked about him to anyone for 50 years. And then she broke her silence. She told her daughter that she had had this son when she was 14. She hires a journalist, a former journalist. His name is Martin. And they are going to track down and find, find where her son is. And so they go to America. They had uh, made a visit to the convent and the nuns would provide no information. And before leaving for America, they had stopped at a local pub and they had found out that the rumor was that the nuns were selling these babies for $1,000 to rich American women. And then one day there was a bonfire and all the records that would have uh, been about the babies and their mothers were burned. And so Martin and Philomena head out to America. Being a former journalist, he's very good at doing an investigative work. And he, he finds out rather quickly that um, her son um, did, did in fact um, live with an American family. He had changed his name from Anthony to Michael Hess. And um, this uh, reporter was able to find out that Michael Hess had had some very prominent positions with the Republican National Committee. In fact, he was an aide to President Reagan and President Bush. And in uh, looking up pictures on the internet, he even found a picture of himself, the journalist found a picture of himself at the White House with Michael Hess. And uh, 
And so he tells Philomena that he actually had this connection with her son. And he said, I shook hands with your son. And she's very intrigued. Well, what kind of handshake did he have? Was it, was it a firm handshake? And, uh, and so they begin further investigations and they, they, uh, they look up a woman who is seen in many of the photographs with Michael. And she's a staffer for the White House. And she tells them, they ask her, were you Michael's girlfriend? And she says, no, um, maybe you didn't know this, but your son was gay. And um, the woman is able to provide for them the name of Michael's sister, his adopted sister. And so they go and meet the sister, and she gives some information, but not a lot. But a key, a key piece of information is that she gives them the, the name of Michael's gay partner. And so their next visit is at the home of Peter, Michael's gay partner. And I should mention that in the course of the investigation, they found out that Michael had died in 1995. And so even though it was exciting to have found, found her son, um, she had to, to realize that she would never, ever meet him. But she wanted to find out all she could find out. And so they went to Peter's house. And Peter slammed the door in, in uh, Martin's face uh, when Martin knocked on the door. But when Philomena knocked on the door, Peter let her in and uh, shared with her some home videos uh, from when Martin was, when, when Michael was very young, rather, and even some later um, videos of Peter and Michael. And then he said to her, uh, and they had often asked, well, did, did Michael ever talk about Ireland? And he said, your, your son is actually buried at that Irish convent that, that you had worked at for four years when he was adopted. And so their next stop is to go back to Ireland to go to the convent. And this is their second visit there. And once again, the, the nuns are not really willing to share any information. But uh, Martin, the journalist, he kind of sneaks down the hallway and he confronts one of the old nuns. And he demands to know why, why they have done this terrible thing for all these mothers and their children. And she, she holds her head up high and she says, those young women were sinners and they deserve their punishment. And I have kept my celibacy all these years. And he is very, very angry with her. And then as they are yelling at each other, Philomena slips into the door. And when there's finally a moment of silence, Philomena looks at the old nun and she says, Sister, I have something to say to you. And she says three words. I forgive you. And then she says, would someone please take me to my son's grave? And so Philomena goes out to the, to the graves and uh, Martin stops at the gift, gift store at the convent. He buys a little statue of Jesus and brings that out and places it in front of Michael's grave. And then the two of them get in a car and pull away and that's the end of the movie. And as you watch the credit line scroll through, you see the name of the book uh, that uh, Martin wrote, The Lost Child of Philomena Lee by Martin Six, Sixsmith. And you also see some other, other interesting credits that the story led to um, Philomena Lee and her daughter Jane, 
going to uh, Washington, meeting with senators and congressmen in an organization called the Adoption Rights Alliance. And they formed the Philomena Project, which was a project to reach out to the Irish government to recover all the records that they could from the Irish churches. And now the records for the mothers and their children belong to the government, and many of the mothers and children after all these years are being reunited. It's, it's an amazing story. It's a true story. And it's a story about how a mother's love is a very powerful force to encounter. Today's gospel is a story of another mother caught in the conflict of a mother's deep love for her child and the story, the age-old story of the hatred between the Jews and some of their neighboring uh, countries. So deep-seated is this hatred that even Jesus was stymied and is not initially willing to help this woman who has come to him. The story is also told in Matthew of how the woman comes to Jesus with her plea and it says that Jesus says nothing. And then she goes to the disciples and begs and begs. And they finally tell Jesus, please do something. And Jesus says something very strange to her. He says, I was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. And, and this woman continues out of her passion and out of her love for her daughter to beg Jesus to help her daughter, saying that even, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And at these words, Jesus says to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. A parent's love for their child is one of the most powerful things in this world, as I said. Parents do not give up very easily. As a prison chaplain, first at New Lisbon and now in Portage at Columbia Correctional, I've observed that one of the strongest bonds and sources to be counted on in this world is the, is the love between an inmate and his mother. Sometimes you see them in the, in the visiting room getting their pictures taken together. They're, they're so happy to be together. They come week after week, these mothers. And then some of the most sad occasions that I have as a chaplain is to visit with the men when, when their mothers have died or are on their deathbeds. And then some of these men have life sentences it's tragic for them. This is the one person that they, that they have the most support from, their mother. They, they, they write, they call, they visit, and then they lose that one person. It's tragic. Think of those people in your lives, either your parents or those who have been your source of support. How was it when you were young when they were so proud of you? And then how, how is it when there are times when they, when they, um, when they, they, they reach out in prayer for you? And, and, and I can remember a time when my dad called, called me once from a hotel room. As a salesman, he traveled around and I was in the hospital and he called me from a hotel room. And he was crying because he said, there's nothing I can do to help you. I've stood at my son's side. I've been proud to see him as a musician play, play in bands over the year. But I've also seen him struggle, and I've cried for him. I still have my mother. She's 90 years old, and we're very close. And... Uh, I visit with her, I talk to her on the phone, sometimes I send her little things, and someday I'm going to lose her, and it's going to be very difficult for me. 
Well, Philomena found her son after 50 years. She was so proud to know what he had become, an aide to two different presidents. She often had wondered if he had been in Vietnam or landed on Skid Row. So she was at peace to know what kind of life that he had lived. And he had made his final wishes to be buried at the convent, hoping that someday she would find him there. Her story and the story of the people in the Philomena project working with the Irish government is an amazing story. Philomena Lee is a mother whose love and passion to find her son would not allow her, like the woman in today's gospel lesson, like the mother of the men I visited in prison, like my own mother and yours, nothing would allow her to accept anything or anyone that would stop her from keeping a place in her heart for her son. This powerful love and the love is love that shows great faith, says our Lord. Faith that releases our Lord's love and his healing power into the lives of those we care for and into the world in which we live. Amen.
it's Marie, and um, I'm glad to see that you um, enjoy Richard on the psalmodies each uh, Sunday. Richard's been to my prison and uh, a lot of worship service, and I'm kind of excited that recently he gave me permission to, to go online and use any of his music, the same music that you're using for worship, uh, to use that at our at our uh, prison services in Fort Ditch. Let us join together our hearts and our minds in prayer for the world, for the church, and for all in need. Holy One, you bring your people together in worship. Enliven your church, guide all evangelists, preachers, prophets, and missionaries who seek to share your love through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You provide water for thirsty ground and sunshine to feed hungry plants. Bless all who advocate for healthy forests, unpolluted air, clean waterways. Inspire all people to show care for the world that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You accompany those who are most in need. Shelter all fleeing violence or persecution, especially the refugees from Afghanistan. Protect any who are in danger. Sustain them through uncertain and unstable times. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Do support the work of your disciples. Continue to nurture the leadership and ministries of this congregation. Help all who are grieving and all those who suffer, especially Pam and Jimmy, Louie, the Dillon family, the families of service members killed in Afghanistan and the refugees, the people affected by the devastation of Hurricane Ida and by wildfires, the healthcare workers who are weary from the persistent pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. You embrace all who have died in the faith and have brought them into your glorious presence. We thank you for their example and rejoice in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We lift up to you in the silence of our heart those that we care about. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts, known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this with a remembrance of me. Today we join in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now I invite you to receive the bread and the juice. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be with you all. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.